Astronomy is an ancient science. We've always tried to make sense of the heavens. We built observatories to mark the movements of the stars, the planets, the moon and the sun. We learnt the passage of the night sky. We saw how it changed, just a little, night by night, a lot, season by season. Different places have different views of the sky, and the same place has different views each season. The ancients put order into the heavens. They grouped the stars into constellations, creating a legend for each pattern. Altogether, there are 88. Here looking north, the autumn constellations from the northern hemisphere. And still in the northern hemisphere, the view south in summer. And now in autumn. The Greeks named over half the constellations. But not here, for they couldn't see this far south. From the southern hemisphere, where the names are more recent, we're looking south in autumn. Of all the constellations, the most glorious, luckily, is visible from everywhere on Earth, Orion. Its pattern links brilliant points of light, really distinctive for the white stars in Orion's belt. But this is our earthly perspective. Fly two circles through space and the stars of Orion shift position. It's because they lie at varying distances from Earth. Only when we return to Earth do they resume their two-dimensional pattern, Orion. In Greek mythology, Orion was a hunter, but he was killed by a scorpion that stung his heel. So in deference, only as Orion sets do the stars of his slayer rise, well away in Scorpius. The band of pale blue is our galaxy, the Milky Way, backdrop to Antares, the brightest star of Scorpius. Scorpius is rich in beautiful objects, and the pattern really looks like a scorpion, especially the tail. This is less convincing, Hercules the Strong. And how about Leo, the lion slain by Hercules? In the pattern of Taurus, the shape of a bull? Easier is Cygnus, constellation of the swan. But this could be anything. In fact, Gemini, the twins. And who would guess Capricornus, the sea goat? Or Sagittarius, half beast, half man? In the northern sky, from the northern hemisphere, a popular pattern takes shape. The stars of the Big Dipper, part of Ursa Major, the constellation of the Great Bear. The Big Dipper, known also as the Plough, has seven main stars. They change position if you go back or forward 100,000 years. It's because the upper and lower stars travel separately from the other five. The five move as a cluster. Two stars in the bowl of the plough or Big Dipper are called the pointers. Merak and Dube show the way to Polaris, the pole star. Polaris is in Ursa Minor, constellation of the Little Bear. The big bear was a nymph transformed for an illicit love affair. The little bear, her son, transformed for mistakenly hunting her. In punishment, the god Jupiter swung the pair into the sky and stretched their tails. The spin of planet Earth causes the nightly motion of the stars, and where we are on Earth governs which stars we see. Nights get longer and shorter because Earth tilts in its annual orbit of the sun, the reason for seasons. Over four seasons, as Earth orbits the Sun, our view of the stars changes. Imagine a line extending through the Sun to the background stars. This is how they'd change through a season. We don't see them because the Sun is so bright. But if we could, this is how the Sun would appear to move through a season against the stars. It's the same for the opposite side of the sky, at night. November from the Northern Hemisphere, looking south. From the same place in February. In May. In August. 
and again in November. But there's one star that barely moves. It lies above the North Pole, Polaris, the Pole Star. As we've seen, Ursa Major contains the Big Dipper, and two stars in the Dipper point to Polaris. While the rest of the sky appears to move, Polaris hardly shifts, whatever the season. An illusion caused by Earth's rotation. It's the same with the South Celestial Pole, only here there's no marker star. Halfway between Crooks, the Southern Cross, and Achenar lies the Pole. Around it, through the seasons, the southern constellations appear to rotate, because it's Earth that's moving, not the stars. In whichever season, our position on Earth dictates our view of the sky. From that position, we see only half the sky. The rest is beyond the horizon. In the mid-latitudes of the northern hemisphere, for instance, we cannot see the Southern Cross. But we do see the North Celestial Pole and Polaris. The farther south we go, however, the lower in the sky is Polaris. From the tropics, it nears the horizon. In the southern hemisphere, the red dot is the South Celestial Pole. The farther south we travel, the higher is the pole. From southern Argentina, 50 degrees south, this is the view. Earth's axis points to the celestial poles, but because the planet wobbles, today's poles won't be tomorrow's. The main cause is the moon's pull on our equator. The effect, called precession, is a cycle. Once the star Thuban marked the north celestial pole. Today it's Polaris. In 4,000 years' time, it'll be Alderamin. The cycle takes 26,000 years. With the pointers Merak and Dubey signposting Polaris, we found the pole star and Ursa Minor, its constellation. Now, from the pointers, a gentle curve through Polaris leads to Cassiopeia, constellation of the Queen. The Big Dipper has another signpost. From these stars, an imaginary line extends to Capella, brightest star in Auriga. Through diagonal stars in the Dipper, we find the giant superstar, Murfak. Murfak is in the abundant constellation of Perseus the Hero. Thus do the seven stars of the Big Dipper signpost these constellations. Now Orion is our signpost. From the belt, three studs point to the great star Aldebaran. Aldebaran is the fierce eye of Taurus, constellation of the bull. Taurus has two famous star clusters, the Hyades and the Pleiades. Back with Orion, Rigel and Betelgeuse point to the star Castor, together with Pollux, the heavenly twins of Gemini. Upper right in Orion, a signpost from the star Bellatrix, via Betelgeuse, leads to the yellow star, Procyon. Procyon is in Canis Minor, pattern of the little dog. With Gemini our signpost, Castor and Pollux point to the stars at the head of Hydra, the sea serpent, then onwards to Alphard, Hydra's brightest star. But to find the brightest star of all, we return to Orion. A line downwards from the belt extends to Sirius, the dog star. Orion and the constellations its signposts. From the southern hemisphere, Orion is inverted, but it's the same trusty signpost. One of 88 constellations, an example of how a vivid and unmistakable star pattern helps us navigate the heavens. Anywhere on Earth, away from city lights, stargazing has endless fascination especially for the informed observer.